Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of the Behind the Frame series. And in this series, as most of you may know, myself along with the rest of the Wild Eye guides jump onto Lightroom and edit one of our images. And hopefully you guys can take some tips and tricks away from it. So for this one, sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee and enjoy. So as I mentioned to you, today I'm going to be jumping onto Lightroom and sharing an image for, for to you that I captured while hosting our Northern Serengeti Migration Safari last year in about October, August time. And this image has turned out to be, you know, I've obviously edited, um, edited the image before and it's really turned out to be something that's very special to me. And that image from the beginning as the raw file this is exactly what it looks like. Now, there's a few things that I want to point out to you, you guys. Obviously, you can see I, saw, I shot this with a very slow shutter speed, and it turned out to be um, a panning shot. And <laughs> to, to put it into a bit of context for you guys, we were, um, myself and my guests, we were busy sitting, and we were watching this incredible um, crossing unfold. It was massive, thousands of animals. And because we had so much time to photograph that crossing, we ended up taking a few opportunities to, um, you know, try, try, different thing, try different things. And that included, you know, trying some slower shutter speed images. For example, if you have a look at these were some of the images we got, you know, so where there were zebras and wildebeest all over the place, trying the slower shutter speed, you can see how it's all kind of, um, captured that blur. We tried it like this. Um, here's another example of that. And then what happened is out of nowhere, this, you know, this little dazzle of zebra came running across the embankment and without changing my settings, I just kind of snapped away. So I will be honest with you, this was a bit of a fluke shot, but nevertheless, it's turned out to be one of my favorite images that I've captured. And if I jump back into this, and we jump up here and I just bring you the information. Let me just run you through my um, settings quickly. You know, I had my ISO nice and low. Obviously, that was because I was bringing in so much light with my shutter speed here, shooting at one fifth of a second and aperture all the way up to 32. I'm really just trying to get as little light as possible in through my aperture and my ISO because of my shutter speed um, being so slow. So nevertheless, let's jump straight into how I edited this image. The minute I saw this image on the back of my camera, I immediately knew it was going to be an artistic type of photograph. And with that in mind, um, I'm definitely going to look to change this to a black and white. And I am going to, you know, the thing is, when it comes to editing images and those types of things, I, I generally like to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I like to be true to what I saw and, and keep the, the colors the same, those types of things. So I don't like to edit a lot, but I do feel like when we jump into a black and white or we are looking to do a slightly more artistic image, that definitely gives us license to push the limits. So with that in mind, let's jump straight into it. I'm going to show you what you, show you guys what I'm going to get up to here. So for example, um, I have already cropped the image. You can see how I've brought it in like this. Um, so I've just brought it into the subject a little bit more, bringing my focus in and around to these zebras. And in fact, with that in mind, I might just even bring it in a little bit more. And this kind of complements a very nice, let's have a look, 16 by 10. Yeah, just to, you know, sort of emphasize that the, the group of zebras that is a little bit elongated, bringing it in by 16 by 10 just emphasizes that a little bit. So this is what we are going to do regarding our crop. Now, like I mentioned to you guys, I'm going to change this into a black and white and we are going to see what we can do here. Obviously, when we think of zebras, we've already got that beautiful contrasting black and white here. Now, what I'm going to try and focus on in this image is I'm definitely going to try and darken the background in general and try and bring it up here a little bit within these zebras. So really trying to focus on that contrast and getting that up. So let's jump straight into that. First thing I'm going to do here is let's see if we start to bring exposure down a touch. I generally, so my sort of flow when it comes to my editing, I like to go with a, a crop. I then do some basic adjustments and then some local adjustments. That will be with my masking and things like that. So we've already cropped. Now we're just going to run through some basic um, edits, which is here on these panels and see what we can get from it. All right. So I'm going to start off here. Remember, we're focusing on those contrasts of blacks and whites, right? 
So I'm really going to try and stretch that right up front. I'm going to bring up my shadows a touch and just bring him down the highlights. Now, I'm a sucker for clarity, um, so I'm definitely going to bring the clarity slider up. What that's going to do is it's just going to add some contrast and uh, specifically to our edges. And if I go extreme with this, you can see how already that just brings this image to life. So especially because this is one of those images where we are really pushing the limits, I'm going to focus on that, and I'm definitely going to push that up a little bit here on my clarity. So getting that up nicely. I'm going to do the same for texture, bringing that texture up a touch. And already, if we look at our before and after, you can see where we're going with this. You can see how these whites are slowly but surely starting to stick out on the zebras. And what I love about this image is one of those things where someone looks at this, immediately you can see there are zebra here. We've got those nice distinctions of the stripes. Although it's blurred, we can see it. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down here into my tone curve. And once again, just stretching the darks and pulling those lights. You can see just that subtle adjustment. Check how we're getting contrast in here. That's my main focus in this image is working the contrast as much as I can. Black and white panel. This is an amazing panel, guys. Whenever you are doing a black and white image, I suggest that you come into this panel no matter what. Just play around with it. It's one of those things. There's no set formula, but just play around with it. Basically, what this does is if we look at our before and after, we've got a bit of orange here. We've got a little bit of green over there, and we might even pick up a few blues in the zebras. Now, if you go onto this panel, it will pick up on those specific colors and it will either make them whiter or darker. So for example, lots of oranges, let's see what that does. If I brighten that up, you can see how these areas over here are really, really getting bright. Same thing if I go the opposite way, darkening them. And I think looking at the image, I quite like the idea of darkening this. So I'm not gonna do it too much. Remember, if you just double click on any slider, it will take it back to zero. So I'm gonna start off from zero again and just work my way backwards here making it slightly darker to around about there, I would say. Let's see what happens if we do the orange or the yellows. Yellows does the same thing, works around those zebras, which is kind of what we want. However, I'm wondering if we should possibly just go up with that a touch um, and just brighten it so that we get, get nice little patches of contrast in and between here. One of my favorite things is constantly checking yourself. A great way to do that is if you hold in or press the letter Y, uh, for yellow on your keyboard, that will put your two images up against each other. And this can just kind of give us an idea of where we're going. So we, we've definitely started to bring in some really nice contrast here, which is what I want. And over and above that, um, we can see where we still need to add a little bit of value. So another great way to see sort of your progress as you go along is next to every slider panel over here. If you come across this little eye here, I like to call them light switches. And if you just hold that in, you can see what changes you've made in that specific panel. So for example, if I go up here, hold the basic, you can see how much progress you've made after every single panel that you work through. And I think that's a great way to just keep an eye on how things are going, uh, where you're going with it. So for now, pretty happy with this. Pretty with that, happy with this. Still want to focus, my, you know, kind of now as we're going along with the edit, I want to focus on getting these whites up here, especially amongst the zebra a little bit, um, just brightening them up a touch. However, remember, we can always keep that in mind with our masking once we make those local adjustments. But for now, let's carry on here. Detail, I love to jump into the detail. If you hold in, so what the masking, sliding do, masking slider does here under sharpening, if you hold in this or the slider and you hold in your option key, all right, you'll see how it makes my screen white. Basically, what this masking slider is telling us that every single um, or whatever is white on our image is going to be sharpened. Now, that might not make much sense now, but if I hold in my option key and I begin to slide this across, all of a sudden you can see how we begin to define the edges to Lightroom in our image. Once again, if I bring that back to zero, I'm holding in my option key. I click on my slider, hold that in. Everything that's white is going to be sharpened. Now, as I begin to pull that across, like I say, we begin to define the edges for Lightroom. And as you can imagine in this specific image, I just want those edges to mainly be on the zebra. 
What I can do now is I can let go, boom, bada, bing. Now I can go and apply my sharpening because that will only be applied to everything that was white, specifically the edges. I'm going to bring this up a touch, bring up my detail a touch, and there we go. Now we've just added a nice little touch of sharpening, and I'm happy with that. Basically, that's as easy as that. If we have a look at our before and after here, we've only worked these one, two, three, four panels, four panels, and you can see where we are going with this image. All right? Now, what I want to do is I want to get a little bit more specific. So I've ticked off my first two steps in my Lightroom or my editing sort of workflow. Number one being cropping. We've done the crop, happy with that. Number two, we made some um, very basic adjustments running through all of the panels. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit more specific, focus on the things that we want to still fix and work on, and take it from there. So if we jump right up here into our masking, um, our masking panel, great place to start. I think looking at the image, let's talk about the image first. If I look at this image, I'm busy thinking here, there's a few elements here that are kind of pulling our eyes. These, these points of contrast over here, this bright white in and amongst these darker areas, and as well as these very dark areas, right? So what I want to kind of do is make sure that my most of the focus is on the zebra. Um, it's the type of image where there's not too much room for you know, your viewer's eyes to wander off. However, we just want to ensure that most of that's going in there. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to focus on bringing my contrast up or brightness as well up here on the zebras a touch. I'm going to bring the brightness up on this dark area a little bit. And then the opposite over here, I'm just going to darken. So that might have sounded like a lot of talking. So let's jump into it and make some magic. So I'm going to get my brush nice and big. I like my flow and density to usually be in and around the 60 mark. I just like that because it, it kind of softens your adjustment. It's not such a like harsh adjustment and rather if to put it into context flow and density on the right hand side over here is if you add a hundred percent exposure it's going to depending what your flow and density is mine's on 60 it's only going to add 60 percent of that adjustment so technically if i were adding 100 exposure it's only giving me 60 percent exposure i hope that makes sense so i like to keep that nice and nice and subtle not too harsh Let's bring up our exposure touch here. I like to bring up the, you know, those sliders to see as I'm brushing what's happening. So here we can already see, like that's definitely adding quite a lot of uh, brightness to those areas. Um, I just want to specifically now go over the dark areas a little bit more, somewhere around about there. You know, so something like that. There we go. So we've added a touch of exposure. Let, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the amount on that down a touch. I felt like it was a little bit aggressive. So bringing that down already here, let's have a look here. Coming to our light switch, remember these eyes? Holding in that light switch, you can see what we've done here. We've brightened that up perfectly, perfectly, just to ensure that there's not so much contrast. Now remember what we said, we're going to go do the opposite over here. We're going to darken it a touch here to kind of match it to this area. So I'm going to create a new mask, go to my brush, Still happy with my flow and density at 60. And now I'm going to bring my exposure down a touch. Same thing. Going to go and brush over this area. And you can see how that's just darkening that up now. Off perfectly. Exactly. Exactly what I'm wanting to see. So now, once again, let's go and hold in our, our light switch. I like to do this pretty much when I'm doing masks. I like to do it after every single mask. Keep an eye on where you're going. Have an idea of the changes you're making. Keep... Keep a lookout on your progress. It's great to know where and how that is going about. So holding that in, you can see how we've done a really nice flip and switch. Um, it's almost pushing us directly into the middle, right? When we think about um, you know, the elements that affect our visual mass, it's things like contrast, brightness, sharpness. So if you can get as many of those elements onto your subject, happy days, happy, happy days. That's what you want because naturally that's going to draw people's eyes. Um, and you want to be able to, uh, I like to call it the push and pull effect. So if we look, in the, look at this image, keep your eye on this, you'll see literally how there is a push and a pull into the middle, which is straight to our zebras. That's exactly what we want. All right, now the last, one of the last things I'm wanting to do is jump onto the zebra. It would be quite interesting to see. Let's see how the selector subject works if it picks up most of them. Okay, oh, that's not too bad. 
I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to be too fussy about it because it is, um, I mean, have a look here. You can see how this, from the panning with that zebra's bottom sticking out there, not too concerned about that. I like the fact that it's just a general soft touch around there. Now we're going to work on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press O for overlay to remove that red. And let's see now if we begin to bring up our exposure. You can see how that, it, it's quite aggressive. You can see how it really works those zebra quite quickly. So I'm going to do it nice and subtly to about a 0 0.15. I'm going to go and I'm, I want to work some contrast in there. So I'm going to get those blacks down. Going to get those whites up to something like that. And once again, just down into my tone curve, I am going to pull it down here towards my darks just make sure that those darks are popping perfectly for us. And if we go once again to our light switch, have a look now how you're going to see this beautiful push and pull. And really, if I hold in my before and after, all of a sudden we have what I think is a very, very pretty image. Something very different, not quite your usual uh, zebra photograph, but these are the type of images I absolutely love capturing in the field, you know? Um, where you can really stretch your camera's abilities, you know, whether it's panning, shooting in high key, low key, those types of things. It's always great to make the most of the opportunities that come your way. And really, to get into your Lightroom, go at it, know that at the end of the day, it comes down to what you enjoy, the type of image that you enjoy and whatever stands out for you. Don't be shy to push your limits. You know, that's what I've always said about Lightroom. Lightroom is, it comes down to however you feel. Um, the way you might interpret this image might be very different and the way you might have wanted to edit it might be different. However, it, like I say to you, it, it does come down to personal preference at the end of the day. So I hope that, you know, you guys might have a few of these artistic images that you might have looked at before and thought, ah, not too sure how you're going to work with it. Um, but I really hope that you've taken something away from this, that you've gotten the, the idea that when it comes to artistic images, blacks and whites, don't be shy to push the limits. Stretch it. Um, work some magic. Focus on your contrast. Focus on that black and white and see how far you can stretch it. Um, and certainly, you know, when it comes to other images where you are trying to be more artistic and, and trying to test the limits, don't be shy to push it. Because as you can see with these images, Sometimes it really does work out really nicely and just gives you a completely different feel for what you might have seen. So there you have it, folks. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. I hope you've taken something away from it. I hope you enjoyed that cup of coffee. And certainly I look forward to uh, jumping onto more of these in the future with you. Um, I hope if you happen to have any questions from what I've done here, please feel free to get in touch with me and I'll happily assist. Um, I'll happily go into more detail if you want me to. Um, and... I look forward to doing it for you again. So until the next time, keep well, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon.